Hello, and welcome back to the NPR Workflow training videos. This is video two of three. In this video, we will be discussing how to create an NPR. To create a new NPR, expand the batch record folder and select Master Production Record. From here, click Add New Record. As I mentioned in the previous video, the first selection to make is which project will the NPR be associated with. If you select the blue arrow next to product name prior to selecting a project, nothing will present in the screen. After selecting a project, click the blue arrow next to the product name. Here you will see the list of final goods and OWIPs you entered into this project. Choose your product. Choose a client. Again, unless you have coordinated production processes specifically for a client, then make yourself the client. Next, select an author. The list seen here will be anyone entered as a quality manager or project manager. The next required field is formulation ID. This must be unique per NPR. Our recommendation is to copy the product named into this field. If this isn't enough, then add some modifier to the end for uniqueness. Below you will enter a theoretical batch yield. The reason this is a required field comes into play when you are attempting to scale up an NPR. Theoretical yield is the amount of a product you plan to produce if everything goes perfectly with zero loss of any materials. This is an unattainable number, but based off this number you organize your bill of materials. Batch size is what you will believe you will produce based off material loss during production or removed for testing prior to release. Batch unit is auto-generated and filled in based on the unit associated with the product. If a primary container was selected in the project, it will auto-generate as well. Amount slash primary container is how much of the product will be placed in each primary container. Amount unit is what unit do you measure the amount you place into each container. And then the number of containers is how many containers you will need to package the batch upon completion. The next thing on the list is a checkbox called Auto Populate Bomb Quantity on Manufacturing Instructions. This checkbox locks the variability of inventory use on specific BPR steps. When we get to creating manufacturing steps, I will explain this in more detail. Below that is a checkbox labeled Use Pick List instead of Inventory. This function is used considering inventory. Pick lists are a way to partition inventory on a pallet for use in production. This will be covered when we cover the inventory management aspect of the software. Next is the Select Document tab. If you wish to attach a document to the cover of the NPR page, you can do this here. However, you can only select the document located in the document management system. The next two boxes are scope and purpose. Here you can enter supplemental information regarding the product's scope and purpose. Attachment is the last selection of the NPR cover page. This is where you add an attachment that isn't located in the document management system. After this, you can confirm your NPR. If you go back to the main NPR screen, you will notice the status says In Progress. Click the blue hyperlink and you can re-enter the NPR. From there, we move on to entering the material selection of the NPR. This is where you build the bill of materials for an NPR. By clicking Add New Record, it will bring you to a new screen. In this screen, you select Part Number from your list of raw materials and IWIPs. After choosing a part, you need to enter the quantity you use per batch and the unit you measure the material within a batch. Next is composition. Here you can enter the measurement this material will make up in one single dosage unit of the final product. Next you have percent adjustment. This is where you enter the percent error you will allow for the material over the course of one batch. After you enter the value, click on Calculate Min Slash Max, and this will calculate the min and max values dependent on the percent adjustment value you've entered. If you would prefer to leave it at 0%, then you can manually set the min and max values. The final selection to make is the Scale checkbox. 
by selecting this, a material will scale if you choose to scale up an NPR and update the theoretical batch yield value. You will continue to do this repetitive process until all materials needed to make a batch are listed. Moving on to the Equipment tab. You will begin adding any potential equipment you would need to measure, weight, volume, or maybe for extraction, purification, or blending. To do this, click Add New Record. From there, click the blue arrow and choose from the equipment list you entered during the setup aspect of the software. You will notice some check marks next to the left of the equipment name. This is an indicator for the status of the equipment. Green means it's fine to use in production. Yellow means there is something that is pending or the equipment is due for some type of maintenance. However, you could still use the instrument. Red means the pending activities have exceeded their grace period or the lack of maintenance has caused the equipment to be no longer usable until maintenance is done. Once all the equipment has been added, move on to the Documents tab. This is like the Equipment tab. Here you will choose documents from your DMS system you wish to have affiliated with the MPR. All of these documents will be copied into the subsequent BPRs created as well. There are status check marks as well, however these range from green to yellow. Green means the document listed is the most current version and is ready for use, and yellow means the document has been superseded or is under alterations to be superseded by a newer version. To update these documents, simply click on the Update checkbox to the left of the document name and then click Update Selected Documents. This will auto-update all superseded documents to their current version. This feature will be most useful when you are versioning up an MPR. The next tab is the in-process test. This has no functionality other than information. This tab allows you to state that during a specific step of manufacturing, an in-process test should be performed. It does not issue a warning or prevent continuation within the manufacturing steps. But if you wanted to have a clear, concise list of in-process tests associated with a step and the acceptance limit, you could list those here. With the completion of these tabs, we will end the video here. Please continue to the next video where we will discuss the intricacies of MPR step construction. Have a wonderful day.